boom, boom. But nah, man, I called you to do, we're live, a slightly unorthodox episode. This is a special episode. Yes, because like I said, it's been a couple weeks. I've been slowing down making content. And uh, I kind of want to think of this, I didn't want to do this, like, um, in terms of like seasons almost. Mm -hmm. But I think of like the first 30 that I've done as seasons. Okay. And this feels like a finale to me. Okay. Because I'm going to be just moving on and just doing not necessarily different things, but it's going to be, there's going to be changes. Mm. I could dig it. I like that. I yeah. Like, that's a good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to hell. Death Talk Taco Podcast. But no, so I should probably do an intro. Uh, welcome to the Death Taco Podcast. I'm Chris, and this is Calvin. Salute. And anyways, like I was saying, though, so I'm 30 episodes into the podcast game. And uh, from the get-go, I kind of wanted to hit the ground running, and I wanted to create this illusion that, you know, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for a while, from episode one. So I never took the time to introduce myself and explain what I'm doing. Okay. And uh, sort of, that's kind of what I want this to be. So what I should have done in episode one, I'm considering, like, I'm going to just do it now. Since fucking going forward, this is where I want to really, like, start investing in this. Hell yeah. And uh, so, yeah, dude, so fucking almost 30 years old. I'm a 30-year-old man with some microphones. And uh, I'm a fan of horror movies and also just a fan of the there's different words for this there's the macabre the what are words like uh morbid stories just fucked up shit yeah i don't know why those have always just piqued my interest and i kind of like approaching them sort of uh last house on the left on the uh what is it last podcast on the left style where it's like yeah i acknowledge they're terrible things but at the same time i like to just poke where i can where it's appropriate to me mm -hmm. and that's kind of what i want this to be and the reason mainly while I'm thinking about kind of changing the format as opposed to just doing movie reviews is a lot of the people that I know aren't as into movies as I am. Okay. And that's where, like, the problem lies. Yeah. I because. So I, I've greatly appreciative of every guest I've had on this show. I've had, like, over fucking 10 guests in 30 episodes, right. which is incredible just to have motherfuckers come and willing to do this with me. Hell Yeah. But the problem being, like, not all of them are necessarily really into movies. movies so, like, yeah. their perspective can only be, you know, the input on being movie review can only be, it's limited. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking there's got to be a more productive way to be more inclusive in that shit. Mm. So that's kind of where the whole wanting to change the format is coming from, which I still haven't exactly got down. I just know I want to do something different. Okay. Well, that's a start, man. That's a start. Specifically, you know, where we're from. We're from Kansas City. Mm hmm Not a huge fucking oversaturated market here just yet. No. No, we're still focused on corn and wheat and farming. And I hate when people say that shit. <laughs> you're from I Kansas? Used, I used to hate that, bro, until I went to Denver a couple times and I had to drive through Kansas. Oh, yeah. Son. Yeah, I know. Son. I know. I know. Son, there's nothing. <laughs> Bro. We, got, we got like 150 miles, right? We got Kansas City, Kansas, and maybe Olathe. And Not then... 150 miles, bro. I mean, yeah, yeah, 150 miles. But I drove 800 miles from here because we're on the complete opposite side of Kansas to where you get to, like, Colorado. Mm-hmm. You drive that entire 800 miles, bro. <laughs> It's like a two-minute drive through some towns. Yeah. The rest of it is fucking <laughs> corn, bro. That's it. <clears throat> Ever since then, I've completely like, okay, I get it. That, they're right. You know? Yeah, they're right. We're I, in that like one, you know, 30-minute stretch <laughs> of highway where there is like city and suburbs and shit. Outside of that, nothing. Nothing. Nothing, bro. Yeah. So yeah, we're definitely just corn, bro. Just put a giant fucking clip art picture of corn on fucking the state of Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> When I, uh, yeah, because, you know, I drove to California. I don't know if I talked about this last time. No. No, you didn't know that? Uh -huh. Oh, man, let me tell you about this, bro. 
I, okay, so here's this whole story. When I stayed out in California, uh, out in San Francisco for a year, and I was gaming, I met a guy named Ryan. Never met him in person, right? But I gamed with him for a whole year, and I knew him for a year. I moved back here to Kansas, and I was still gaming stuff. It was getting close to my birthday. And he was like, I was like, man, I got to figure out what I'm going to do for my birthday. And he was like, uh, just bring your family out here, man. Right? I never met this guy. Met him from gaming. And I go, where you live? And he's like, Temecula, California. It's an Indian reservation. He was like, mm-hmm. there's no police. It's all, it's all like, like if the sheriff comes, they have to talk to the head chief of the tribe to even come onto the reservation. I'm like, damn, that sounds kind of dope. He was like, yeah, man. He's like, I got a, a trailer you can stay in. He's like, I'll stay in the house. You and your family can stay in the trailer. I was like, all right. So I talked to my wife about it. She was like, have you met him? I was like, nah. She was like, do you know what he's like? I'm like, nah. She was like, and you want to bring us and go? I go, baby, I'm going to have the gun. You know, if anything goes south, you know, I'll shoot him before anything. We'll just book it back. She was like, so I talked her into it. I'm like, all right, bro. So I'm I'm coming. I'm coming. So we left. Now, we left December 27th. I wanted to go south. Towards Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. Fly out. My ass went towards Colorado. Bro, I'm in Colorado. It's starting to be sunrise. It's 6 a.m. We left at 10 p.m. at night. It's 6 a.m. We're in Colorado already. I'm booking. I'm doing like 90 down the highway. Pew. Blizzard in Aspen, Colorado. Fat blizzard. And around Aspen, there's all these fucking mountains, dude. Uh, I'm talking about the blizzard is so bad, it, I can't see, but I ain't stopping. Because I got I got the kids with me. I got my girl. This was my idea. We in a, a blizzard in some mountains right now. Uh-huh. How we make it through? Blizzard. Again. After like 50 miles of no blizzard, another blizzard. Uh, <laughs> we see cars smacking into each other. We've seen a car drive right down like it went off the road. There was a guy running behind the car trying to chase the van. And this van was just gone, coming right towards us in traffic. My girl's like, Cal, Cal, you see that? You see that? I was like, I see it, babe. It's chill. We can't go more than 20 miles an hour. We got bad tires. Cool. We made it through the blizzard. It's nighttime. I'm driving through. I drove 30 hours straight. It was only supposed to take me 17. We get into Utah. Blizzard again. I run into two more blizzards. Finally, after driving through that, we get down into Las Vegas. We get Flagstaff, California. And it, it snows there too. Well, it had just snowed. And a car ran off the highway. A car on a mountain off the cliff hit the other highway, wrecked. Traffic was backed up. Couldn't move. I'm talking maybe for like 65 miles. It was just standstill traffic. Mm-hmm. People had their cars off and were asleep in their car. I pulled off. Tried to hit the back streets with the GPS. It's snowing now. And it's I'm down like a like ranch. It's like a ranch area in the middle of the mountains. My car is struggling. Going up hills. We're like literally in the middle of nowhere now. We're away from the highway. There's like a house. And then like field, mountains. And then, like, a house a mile away, kind of like the country out here. I end up pulling over. We slept. It was negative three degrees. I slept for two hours before it got too cold. Woke up. Drove to my friend's house. Falling asleep on the highway. We finally get there. Coolest motherfucker I ever meet. Comes out with a bottle of Blue Label whiskey. It's like a $150 bottle. Pours me a shot before we even get inside taking shots so we now i get there at 4 a.m been driving for 30 hours we stayed up all night drinking i stopped at some dispensaries in arizona and we were smoking we was drinking it was dope never met him in my life and he was like man don't even worry about staying in the trailer it's too late to hook it all up you can sleep in my kids room or the kids can sleep in the kids room you and your wife can sleep out here in the living room it's like dope man it was a great he was a really good friend actually it was dope I don't know why I got on that topic. So this was an Indian dude? He was a white guy. Lived on an Indian reservation. The only white guy that lives on the Indian reservation. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. And, and the Indian reservation was pretty dope. <clears throat> like they had a casino, like you like two minutes walking. And uh I mean it was not a whole bunch of military families stay there, I guess, to put mm-hmm. it, which is kind of weird now that I think about it because 
we like kind of took their land and now all of a sudden they're like yeah yeah you're in the military stay here discounted yeah hmm. but it was pretty nice and then i get home and i'm listening to uh, my mr nightmare and they tell a story about temecula california right when i get out there i'm like what the fuck <laughs> What was the story? Was it any good? Uh, it was all right. Um, it was pretty much about these people trying to kidnap uh, some people in a car. They saw this girl walking down the road like at 1 o'clock at night, and they give her a ride. And she's like, yeah, I'm just a mile down the road. And they get to a mile down the road, and you get more isolated as you go out. She was like, no, it's just another mile. It's just another mile. And then about after four miles, they realize that out there, there are roads once you get into the mountains, climbing up into the mountains, it's isolated, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody lives on the mountains. So they saw that they were, like, kind of going up into the mountains where nobody was at. And she was like, yeah, it's just another mile. And this guy and his wife were kind of like, uh, there's nothing out here. Like, where is she taking us? And she was like, yeah, and we could just stop right here in the middle of, like, the mountain forest. And they're like, uh, you can get out. You can get out now. You can get out. And she got out and started, like, screaming at him and shit. Like, we're going to kill you. We're going to kill you. And they just booked it back. Like, fuck that. And that happened in the town, in supposedly? The, yeah, in the Temecula town. Like, like how I feel they were telling the story, how the image I had was, so my friend's house, as you go down this this road, and then it's, it's a little cut off, <clears throat> and there's a gate, and it's the Indian reservation right there. And then the road just keeps going straight to... To just right into the mountains and it seemed like she was just walking right down past that gate on that road on that same road is how i had it in my, in my, imaged in my head bro <laughs> and i was like damn and i heard it right when i had got back into town because i listened to scary stories the whole drive mm -hmm. and uh i heard that shit and i was like what the fuck well, that's scary i saw some crazy shit on the on the, them two-way highways because when i came back i came back through uh Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. And there was a lot of two-lane highways where uh, there was no lights, like no street lights or nothing like we have. There's Honestly, most of the highways, there's no lights. You probably noticed that when you drove out to Colorado. There's no lights on the highways. It's yeah, dark. that's why I, uh, I only drove during the fucking day. I never, never one time did I have to be driving at night, which I'm thankful for. That is an adrenaline rush to be at <laughs> night. I, <laughs> So we drove down a little two-way highway, man, passing little towns, like ran down ghost towns. Just, I mean, I saw some, saw some people, some, like, why is that person standing there on the side of this highway? You know, like, it's some crazy shit that you, you know. when I went to Florida, I saw they hung dummies out of trees in Alabama, black dummies. Hmm. They hung black dummies hanging from trees. And Still? I, uh, I don't. This was probably like I was eighteen, so ten years ago. Still, <laughs> yeah. Yo, you. Whenever you see shit like that, you always think, "Oh, that happened in like the fifties, yeah, sixties." Is it still going on? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude, that was a, that was an intense moment too, because my I was right. I was on the run from the police with my friend's dad, and we were we were going down to Florida, and he was like, "It was it was getting dawn." Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. I was like, "What, man? What? Look up at the tree." So what, what do you, what the fuck, bro? Like seven, eight of them. I was like, oh, hell no. That gave me like the most just disgusting, sickening, terrified feeling ever when I saw that. Because I was like. And you were raised by a fucking black family, you said, right? Yeah, I was raised by black people. But, I mean, in general, you should still feel fucked up when you see it. But I can imagine that resonating even harder with you. Like. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Like. And then it was like, the worst part was, it was like, I was 100 miles from where we were supposed to be. So I'm like, man, that's close. Like, that shit's, that shit's kind of close. And this was in Alabama? Yeah, or, let me see. Yeah, uh, Alabama, Georgia, I don't know, somewhere right there. Somewhere in the south. Yeah. See, that's crazy to me because, like, we live currently in a big populated city, so it's fairly progressive around here. So we get really comfortable thinking like, oh, racism, racism is dead. It's, it's, you know, it's only, it's very rare that it exists. But apparently motherfuckers are still flaunting it out in the backwoods, right? The yeah. back country. It is very much still a thing, which is a shock to me. Because if you ask me from my own personal experiences, like, I could easily just say, like, oh, bro, there's not that many real racist people anymore. Like, no, 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 motherfuckers are still out there, apparently, though. Yeah. 
That's crazy. That, I mean, Martin Luther King Jr. would only be 50-something. Mm. What? Yeah, he'd only be 50 years old right now. <laughs> Bro, that math is fucked up, I promise you. No. the hell you mean he would be 50? He'd be like, he'd be like 50, 60 years old. Bro, didn't he get assassinated in like the 50s? Oh, we're about to find out. Bro, I'm about to kill your fucking math right How now. How old is Martin Luther King Jr. if he is still alive? Nineteen sixty-eight. He he died April fourth, nineteen sixty-eight, at the age of thirty-nine. Mm-hmm. But so sixty-eight plus thirty-nine. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Was that a hundred? No, nah, that ain't a hundred. Hold on. Excuse me, audience. We're gonna look up right now how old Martin Luther King would be if he was still alive. I don't think he he'd be like <sighs> sixty, maybe, maybe seventy, eighty at the most. <laughs> He was born in 1929, bro. We're in 2021. Uh, That's uh, almost 100 years old. Well, see, he'd still be alive, bro. <laughs> he, he had good health. He has good health. He'd still he'd be, be alive. He'd be 57, bro. <laughs> you mean maybe when he died. Okay, I'll give you that. 69 to now, then yeah, he'd be in his 50s, but... Okay. That, maybe that's what you meant. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. He was born in 29? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. The motherfucker old. But yeah, it's not that long, man. The racism shit and all that shit, it was not that long ago. We're looking at like 60, I mean, 60 years when you say it, it's like long. Like, damn, the Chiefs took 50 years to win a Super Bowl, you know? Well, no, no, the 60s ain't that like that far away. Like, when you think about the dinosaurs being fucking alive, you know, millions of years ago. Yeah. What is 60 years to that? True that. Dude, have you ever thought about if we still had dinosaurs? No, but like, where are you going with it? Just like, man, I have, I have like, just be like, okay. So think about like our region. Because what made me think about it was I went to the Disney World thing with the little Jurassic Park theme they had going on. And I just was like, damn, dude, could you imagine like just being in your house, looking out the back door and be like, oh, wow, hey, look. Hey, guys, there's some, there's some raptors outside instead of deers. There's, there's just some raptors rolling around. Hey, let's not go outside for about an hour. We'll stay inside. <laughs> hey, imagine there's motherfuckers in Africa who live like that. They're like, oh, look at that. There's a lion that's the size of a cow, but it's as agile as a cat, and it can just fucking bite the back of your neck and carry you into a tree and eat you. And just eat you. I was watching something with the uh, water buffalo out there mm -hmm. with the big-ass horns. They're yeah. like the most aggressive thing in Africa. Getting that confused with the hippo, sir. But I heard those will fuck you up, too. Yeah. Like, like not even lions fuck with them. Fucking hippo kills more people than lions by far in Africa. Can you imagine getting killed by a hippo? What a way to go. Son. <laughs> That'd be like if your van just had a mouth and it just fucking... It doesn't even eat you, bro. It just bites you, crushes your fucking bones, probably decapitates you, and just goes... Puh. Puh. That was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> now he looks better. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I, I'll be thinking about the animals that were, that are out there and what we have around here. Like, could you imagine like anacondas or, 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 or fuck that. My worst fear ever. Could you imagine fucking like a camel spider in your shit? Could you imagine coming out here and there's a spider that's as big as your frame picture right there? Just hanging out. That wouldn't bother me. Insects don't bother me, bro. A spider? Nah, dude, because they're not messy when you kill them. Oh, shit. Dude. You kill them, bro, and it's just like, all right, scoop you into the trash or flick you off into the fucking corner. You're, you're gone. What bothers me is, um, we've talked about this before. I got a thing with bears. Imagine, there's some places in this country, bro, where motherfuckers got bears like we have raccoons. Yeah. Imagine a fucking, you know, I can't even describe how big it is, because in my imagination, it's exaggerated, but like... This fucking tall, about this fucking wide. At your window. <clears throat> like a couch. A, basically a raccoon the size of a couch. <laughs> Son, and you gotta just go like, oh, don't worry, they're harmless. No, fuck that, dude. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, just don't look at them. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Yeah, fuck that. Anacondas? That's scary, yeah. Just... But like, if you're in the rainforest, man, you're anywhere in the woods... Don't go in the woods. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes they probably come into towns, but if that's the case, the motherfuckers got to die. Yeah. You got to go chop your head off. 
I mean, now, so I don't know why I've been thinking about this lately. Do you have any, like, stories with homeless people? Yes. Bro, because I feel like lately I've not had necessarily encounters, but, like, I've just seen a lot of shit. Yes, dude. I have I have a funny story, actually. Uh, you might know. Uh, you remember Caleb McCoy from high school? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so it's me, Caleb, and Mike, Mike Abbott. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're down on 75th. And Medcalf, where the uh, there's like the Price Chopper, there's like the Frozen Custard, Blockbuster used to be right there. Uh, oh, no, I'm lying. I'm sorry. No, I'm up by South. That was a different homeless man story. Caleb and Mike, we're up by South going down by the trails. And we go off of the trail because that's where we'd smoke. We had this nice spot that we could smoke. <laughs> so we're already smoking on the way back there. And, and we're walking. We see this figure laying down right in like a blue uh camping what is a sleeping bag and he's laying down and we're smoking and we're like oh shit that's a that's a person and you know when, for some reason back then when we saw homeless people it was like whoa you see him he's homeless right so we're looking at him we're like dude he's in our spot where we smoke like that's our smoking spot. And we get up there and we're like, hey. I'm trying to be like, hey, hey, get out of there. Hey. Like he was an animal. This guy gets up and he like, so we're over to his left. He gets up and all of a sudden he's just like, looks at us. <laughs> <laughs> and we booked it. Uh, we booked it back. We run it through the woods, right? <laughs> and... I look back, I look back, and it's Caleb is right here, and we're running full speed, boom, 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 we're jumping over logs, jumping over sticks, I look back, and it's Caleb, and he hits a stick, and the stick shoots out from under his foot, and all his face, and he just falls flat on the ground, bro, and he just had this terrified look like he was getting chased, in a horror movie, and he just fell. He's like, <gasps> and he like gets everything with slow motion because adrenaline's rushing. And he gets back up and he just starts booking it. And we get to the edge of the woods and we look back, and he's not even chasing us, bro. Like he he just had to look over at us, and we just started dying laughing. Imagine if you guys were like at Camp Crystal Lake and you're in Friday the Thirteenth, yeah, and you're like, yo. You see that fucking dude sleeping on the ground back there? He's in our fucking turf with this fucking guy. <laughs> hey, asshole! He just stands up with his hockey mask and his machete, bro. I mean, but you're you were young, so yeah. I mean, but I guess so. Dumb shit like that does happen. And shame on you guys for fucking with this homeless. Yeah, man, he was probably sleepy. <clears throat> He's probably coming off of a binge or something. <laughs> well, uh. Out in Denver, or Boulder, Colorado, I took my girl out there when she was she was like three months pregnant, and we're walking and there's this homeless lady sitting there. She goes, my girl had this Hello Kitty shirt on. She goes, shame on you, bitch, shame on you. We're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Hello Kitty supports child porn. Shame on you. You like child porn. You like child porn, and just start screaming this out in the. T- And we're like, oh, oh, what the fuck? Shame on you. Hello, kitty supports child porn. And we're like, let's get out of here. It was just. You really are a traveled man at this point in your life. Oh, I've traveled a lot. Yeah. You've seen some shit. I've traveled a lot. It was cool. Uh, But yeah, dude, they just just live on the boat. A lot of people out there lived on a boat. And they they would pay the $200 or like $150 or $75 bucks to keep their boat parked in the little ramps. And, dude, I mean, I've seen some decked-out boats. You go in there, and they got, like, a bathroom, a shower, a TV, a couch, a fold-out bed. So, with all that, at what point do they stop becoming homeless? Mm -hmm. Like, once you have a boat and you live on the water, are you really still technically part of the homeless community? I guess just jobless at that point. But But if you're, like, fixing shit, can you really say you're jobless? Oh, see, man? (laughs) I don't know, dude. Because this sounds like something completely different. Like, when I think of homeless, I think of, like, the dudes just chilling on corners, like, that look like they just got fucking 
like their mechanics, but they haven't really been in a garage and worked on any cars. You know? Right? Yeah, yeah. Like motherfuckers <laughs> just look grimy, and <laughs> like they just look grimy as shit, bro. <laughs> but it's like they're not really mechanics. That's just like life, dirt, semen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just fucking all caked up. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I guess they couldn't really be homeless at that point. Fucking reason I bring it up is like I said, I've been a recluse for most of my life. Just I don't know why, out of habit, I've never gone out to like the downtown area. Mm-hmm. I've never really left just my own hood. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've always been like whenever I kick it, I drink at home. Ever since I was younger, pre eighteen, you know. Mm-hmm. So I never felt the need to go and explore. But recently, you know, I've been trying to get out of my comfort zone, exploring my own city more, exploring, you know, when I went to Colorado, their downtowns and shit. So yeah. this is all really new to me to, like, see the homeless community. Gotcha. Like, when I went to uh, Denver, I went to Colorado Springs first, and there's this uh, spot outside of it called, uh, I can't think of it. It's just some little random town. Okay. And the, we, me and my girl, we pulled into this parking garage. We're like, oh, we're going to explore this little downtown. This looks like a nice little fucking throwback fucking community or some shit. And uh, as soon as we get out of our car, we're walking. There's some dude with a sleeping bag just like fucking in a V-line straight towards us on the side of the road. And uh, I'm, smoke, I'm still smoking at this time. I got a cigarette. And he's like, hey, you got a cigarette? And I've always been the type, bro, whenever someone asks me for a cigarette, I'm like, yeah. Because I always feel like if I'm in that scenario, I'd hope someone would return it to me. Yeah. So I give him the cigarette, hand him the lighter. He lights it. He's like, I'm going to go in the mountains and die. <laughs> what? And then he just keeps on walking towards the fucking mountains. And this is an older man, bro. And I was like, that was fucking different. Yeah. <laughs> this is my like one of my first interactions. Like, And you could tell the dude, like I said, he has a sleeping bag. He looks like he's all grimy and shit. I'm like 19 or 20. Okay. And me and my girl, we get a craving for some Taco Bell, like, 2 in the morning. This is pre-pandemic. Now most of the fucking Taco Bells close at midnight, motherfuckers. Right. But anyway, so we pull up to this Taco Bell. <clears throat> and the way this drive through works is it's one of those where you have to, like, go into the path, like, from very far away. You know mm. what I'm saying? Kind of like once you start going in, there's no turning off of the driveway. You, either you got to reverse all the fucking way back out. Or you got to go straight and wait in line. Yeah. And uh, so that's how this was set up. So we got to start around the parking lot, come around the bin. And then when we come around the bin, we notice there's a guy standing in front of the drive through menu. Back planked up against the wall, stiff as a board. <laughs> this is this uh, just this black dude, bro. He's tall as shit. You got to be over six foot skinny dude he's wearing fucked up clothes and he's just planked against the menu we pull up to the box he realized the box is about three feet away from the menu so this dude's just posted right there just eyes real big making hard eye contact yeah i know bitch man roll down the window a little bit i'm not gonna lie i didn't roll it all the way down (laughs) and i just stop and i'm just looking at this dude there's no way out of this situation i have to drive over the curb there's cars in front of me at the window, so I can't get out that way. I'm like, all right, we're here. So I'm waiting. First thing the voice box says, is he still there? <laughs> and then I just see that I look up at the dude, and the dude shakes his head left to right. No, he's not. Uh, can I get a chalupa? And uh, I do my order. Fucking as soon as I get to the window, bro, I'm, <laughs> I'm like... The guy didn't even say anything. He just was standing there, bro. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. But I told Lay at the window, I was like, fuck yeah, the dude's still there. It's creepy as shit. What are you doing? Ugh, nah, this... man, but... So, content-wise, what are you doing going forward? Man, like I said, right now I'm just trying to uh, get me a pre-built computer going on so I can get my background at least more entertaining. <sighs> I don't want to just be the guy in the square... Because that's how it is, is. I'm just a square, and then you got the little fucking video in the back. I want it to be more like... <clears throat> so, also, I want to paint, paint a side of my wall green, so I have, like, a green screen type yeah. of deal behind me. 
so I'm not just the guy in the square. And then I want to try to get music's a big thing in there, especially like if I'm gonna tell stories. I want to be able to get some like dark, kind of like intense music going in there. Where people are like, oh shit. What you're looking for is atmospheric. Yeah. I've looked, I've, uh, yeah. I have those. Yeah, I got a bunch of like I've looked up. You got to look for the ones that are like uh, no copyright and shit. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm looking for that. I want to get the green screen behind me. I want to be able to like, if I have to take a shit, because it happens a lot, if I have to take a shit, I want to be able to just like hit a button and have some. Maybe like I play clips of other twitches or something other streams so people can watch something while i'm doing my thing mm -hmm. um but as of right now i've just kind of slowed down man not having the the right tools um to get the stuff rolling it's kind of like put a damper in it i guess i feel i think that's kind of where i'm at like i feel like i don't want to keep i feel like i make good content but it's not necessarily being pushed in its best light yeah yeah so I don't I don't want to like <clears throat> burn out. I don't want to burn nobody out, nobody else out. And I don't want to burn myself out on something more like uh, I don't want to be uh, discouraged, you know. So it's like because at first I was when I was on Twitch and I was kind of getting I was like having like seven to eight viewers, but then it was like after like two months, just kind of the same stuff you know it dwindles down to like three and then two so i was like hold on man i'm gonna see what what other people are doing you know and i mean it's just real simple shit i mean i might even just have like a party podcast where i get on there and have the disco lights going and some music and, doom, 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 and just start talking bullshit with motherfuckers while i'm doing it because that i mean that one works i've seen people do that shit and and have like 150 viewers and just be like, yeah, doom, 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 doom. how's everybody doing tonight? Doom, 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 doom. And just be talking to their chat, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I don't know. And I've been thinking about. Uh, <clears throat> I talked to my cousins. Uh, they want to do like um, short films. Yeah. And that's a cool concept because that's something that I've thought of in the past. Like, I'm a big fan of... Uh, you've seen the VHS movies, right? Yeah. I thought that idea is fucking incredible because all you need is a video camera, a little bit of fucking actors, mm -hmm. the bare minimum, right? And uh, the way I think of stories, it's really practical. So, like, I told you how I write stories sometimes. Yeah. And I got this story I want to do, bro. I want to call this motherfucker. I've thought about this really fucking hard. I want to call it Jawbreaker. Oh, and the concept would be uh, you get, like, four high school age kids, right? Okay. And they're, like, walking around bullshitting outdoors. And they stop at this parking lot because they see there's a car on four cinder blocks. Looks like it's been set on fire. So they're like, oh, what the fuck's up with this car? You know, they're fucking with it. They have, like, a... They try to break the windows out because they're hooligans. They're like, Let's see if there's anything good in this motherfucker. Can't break the windows. And so... uh they're like, all right, well, we're going to go get a fucking uh, a pipe or something. Try to break open the windows of the trunk. So they tell one of their boys, hey, wait here. We're going to go get this fucking tool or whatever the fuck we're going to get. Yeah. They come back. Three of them do. Their boy's gone. They're like, oh, he must have gone home or some shit. Fuck it. So they can't break the windows in. I don't know why. Supernatural. Right. <laughs> they end up popping the trunk, though. They pop the trunk. There's a fucking uh, dog kennel in the back. And there's a fucking dead dog inside of it. They take the kennel out. Fucking one of them. One of these kids is going to be like backwoods type nigga. He's going to be like, oh, I could clean this motherfucker out. I could still use it. Mm -hmm. So the other kids, they uh, they manage to break open the back of the trunk to where they can like get into the back of the car through that little back part. Yeah. But they can't fit their whole body in. So they just stick the camera in that bitch. And when they stick the camera through that bitch, the whole inside of the car, pretty much, I want to use this, like, red luminescent light to make it look like it's pretty much hell in the back of this car. Like, there's going to be blood all over the motherfucker, all over the inside. And they're going to pan the camera, and you're going to see there's a dude sitting in the fucking one of the seats. Ooh. Just sitting there. You only see his back, though. Yeah. So then they're going to bring the camera back in. And pretty much the concept's going to be after that, they're going to leave the car alone. But it's going to be, like, kind of the grudge. Once you fuck with the car... You're cursed. Mm. And the way the curse gets you is you start seeing the car on the cinder blocks in random places. Okay. And that's, like, kind of how I picture it ending is one of the kids finds, like, the car 
in his fucking garage. And it's on the cinder block still, so it's supernatural. Hell yeah. So he goes into the car, and uh, the door is open, so he's like, fuck it. He gets in, shuts the door. All three of his boys are sitting in the fucking the seats. And he looks over, and they all got hoods on. And when he looks over, one of his boys, they're, all their jaws are fucking hanging down to their fucking chest. Uh, and yeah. they put this tool in his mouth. And all you see is them, I imagine like uh, one of them priors. Like yeah. You put it in, and it's got a winder. And when you wind it, he's just twisting it, twisting it, twisting it. And it's fucking... The jaw breaks down. That's hard. I know. And he'd be like the last one. So each of all of his friends go missing when they see the car. And that's the, you get the yeah. story. But that's like a real specific fucking thing I've thought about. I thought that'd be fire. That's hard. That is hard. I like that. Well, Hell that'd be, yeah. That'd be stuff I'd like to do. Hell yeah. Like I what kind of, I remember you saying you've thought of stories, man. What do you got? Oh, man. I'm pulling this out. I got one story. I try to do short stories. But they seem kind of long, but they're short. We'll go through it real quick. I've written two so far. And uh, so far, I just, I, I feel like this one is my better one. I don't really have a name for it at all. But uh, it doesn't take that long to write. It just takes that much longer to fucking proofread it, put in your punctuations and shit, which I, I figured out because I failed all my English classes. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll read it. I get a little stage fright, so excuse me a little bit. Um, it goes pretty much like, it was the middle of August and I'm laying down in my bed. In Kansas, the weather can be a little unpredictable. It was around midnight when I heard a faint tapping at my window. My room is on the second floor and is right next to an overhanging branch. I brushed off the tapping as the branch hitting the window. As I scrolled through my Twitch watching other streamers play Call of Duty and Apex, I saw a big flash of lightning, or what appeared to be lightning, outside my window. As I lay there waiting for the boom of thunder to shake the house, the power goes out. As I sit up thinking that maybe a tree took out the power lines, I walk over to my window to see my neighbor's lights are still on. Great. The fuse blew again. I grab my flashlight and start heading towards the basement. Only when, only when I get to the steps, my flashlight won't turn on. Damn it. I'm out of batteries, and the batteries are downstairs in the kitchen drawer. So I head down the steps towards the kitchen, blindly searching the cabinets for some AAA batteries, when I seen a flash of lightning again from outside the kitchen window. Once again, waiting for the big boom of thunder to follow. Nothing. Must be an electrical storm, which is pretty cool to watch. I finally found the batteries and put them in my flashlight. Before heading down to the basement, I want to take a peek outside and see if I can't see some lightning for myself. Storms have always fascinated me. I head to the front door and step out onto the porch. To my surprise, it's a beautiful clear night with a wonderful view of the stars. That's when I seen what I thought was lightning flashing from the side of the house. I quickly snapped my head in the direction of the flash, and that's when I caught a glimpse of someone moving around the corner of the house. I, si I shined my flashlight in the direction of the flash and stated whoever is over there needs to leave now. You're trespassing and I will shoot you. Even though I didn't have a gun, they didn't need to know that. I wait a few seconds and there is no noise, no nothing. With the flashlight lighting the walkway towards the side of the house, I walk around to the back, expecting to see a homeless man or a crackhead doing some crackhead shit. But to my surprise, there is no one back there. I know for a fact I saw a flash, the same flash that was outside of my bedroom window. I head over to the tree with the overhanging branches and start to look around. I find a set of footprints going to the tree. I quickly shine my flashlight around the tree to see where the footprints had gone, but they just stopped at the tree. That's when another flash came from up in the tree. As I looked up, I could see a man in his mid-thirties with long, dirty hair sitting on the edge of the tree limb that extended out to my bedroom window. What the fuck are you doing? I screamed. I screamed at the man, who then gave me this crazed look and a smile and started laughing like a maniac. I bolted for the front door. When I got inside, I deadbolted the door and ran up to my room, grabbed my phone, and called 911. I told them about the man taking pictures of me from the tree. The cops got there fairly quickly, probably about seven minutes. They looked around the property and inside the house, but didn't find anything. They told me to keep the doors and windows locked, leave a light on when I'm not home, so it seems like someone is home, and keep a TV on so it seems like people are having a conversation. I thanked the police for their time as they left. Now to head to the basement and flip the fuse back. 
Flashlight in hand, I head down the basement stairs to the fuse box. The fuse box is at the far end of the room. When I open the fuse box, I notice that one of the breakers had flipped. So I flipped all the breakers back to normal, hit the light switch next to me, and the room was filled with light. Feeling relieved, I went back up to my room to think about the events that took place, even though nothing else had happened for the rest of the night. A few days later, I'm in the kitchen making a midnight snack when I hear a tapping coming from the kitchen window. I look up and I see a photo stuck to the window. This photo is of me laying in bed watching my phone. I then hear another tapping coming from the living room window. I grab a knife in the flashlight and I head towards the tapping noise. I get to the window and there's another photo of me and the police looking up at the tree. The photo looked to have been taken no more than 10 feet away. He must have turned the flash off. I grab my phone to call the cops back to my house and tell them about the tapping in the photos. They tell me to keep the doors locked and to stay away from any windows. The police that arrived were the same officers that had responded a few days ago. I handed the police the photos. They looked at them confused on how someone could have been that close to us without us noticing. The cops conducted a quick perimeter check to see if the guy was still out there. One of the cops even brought out his police dog and had the dog sniffing the photos and around the property. After about 10 minutes of searching and not even the dog hitting on a scent, I thanked them again for their time and waved them goodbye. I walked back into the house puzzled and creeped out about everything that had taken place that night. Let me finish making this snack and head to bed. I walked into the kitchen, grabbed the bread, mayo, and ham, made a sandwich. It was when I was putting the ham back in the fridge I looked and I noticed a picture on my fridge. It was taken of me sleeping, just feet away from my bed. My blood ran cold as it hit me that this crazy man was inside of my house while I was asleep. He could have done anything to me and he would have had to jump on me. Then I heard it, then I heard it, the tapping, but this time it wasn't from a window. It was coming from my bedroom door. I ran out of the house and ran to my neighbor's house. He let me in as I started telling him about the events that had taken place over the past few days. We called the police, the same officers came back and they had their dogs out and ready. Ooh. The same officers came back with their dogs out and ready. Not even two minutes after entering my house, you could hear the dogs barking like crazy and what sounded like a scuffle going on upstairs. Then the two police officers came down with the same man I saw in the tree in handcuffs. He looked at me and started laughing uncontrollably like a maniac. His eyes were so dilated you couldn't even see his whites, the whites in his eyes. The cops told me they found him hunched down in my closet with a knife in his hand as he was waiting for me to come back up. Who knows what he had planned for me. The end. You know, that reminds me of an actual story that happened. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. There's this story. It might be a creepypasta, but it's a really short one where a lady says uh, she gets home from work and she's in an apartment. And she, um, I think she hears a knock at her door or some shit. So she walks out to, like, the main entrance of the complex. And then when she comes back inside, you know, there's nobody there. Uh-huh. So she goes back and she uh, she's getting ready for bed. She uh, turns the water on to take a shower and she's walking around her room fucking getting ready. And she notices out of her peripherals that there is a naked dude laying under her bed. Oh, shit. And she can kind of just make out his leg or some shit. And she plays it off. She keeps walking, grabbing clothes. She goes into the restroom, locks the door, and she uh, jumps out a window. Fucking calls the cops from somebody else's place. And the cops said that whenever they went back to her fucking uh, apartment, they found the dude standing outside the restroom with the knife. Oh, shit. So that exactly reminds me of what she wrote, but you added on the photo element of the whole fucking thing, bro. That's fucking crazy. That shit's creepy, though, man. That's that real life shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I go for, man. That was one. And then the second one, uh, I won't won't read. I'll just do a brief summary. It's uh, of me working in a restaurant with a friend who likes to play pranks and... uh, Long story short, it was a very busy night. It was the end of the night, closing up. He had taken out his trash, didn't come back in. I had my headphones in. I lit up a cigarette outside, took my trash out, hit the trash compactor, threw away my trash, came back in. He wasn't found for a couple days. He ended up being missing. Uh, Then they called me back into the manager's office and told me it wasn't my fault and everything was going to be okay. And I pulled back the video cameras and he had gotten in the trash compactor trying to scare me. Mm -hmm. And since I had my headphones on and I was smoking a cigarette, I always start the trash compactor before I throw the trash in. I crushed him to death. Beautiful. Yeah. So. (laughs) There's this story, bro, that's an urban legend I always liked. 
It's the uh, the one where the lady finds the dog in her microwave. What? You ever heard of that? No. It's an old lady. It's always got to be an old lady. This is the urban legend. So she uh, she lives alone. She's just her and her dog, and she's always on the recliner at the end of the night watching TV. And her dog's always, you know, fucking at her side or whatever. So she's, like, half asleep, half awake. Her dog starts barking. She puts her hand down, lets the dog fucking lick her hand. She's like, okay, you're hungry. Let's go get you some food. Brings the dog some fucking food. She's falling asleep again. The dog's still barking a little bit, getting a little restless. She's like, all right, lick my hand. All right, I'll take you out for a walk. Comes back inside, sits on the recliner. She's chilling again. She thinks she's falling asleep. She's fucking, the dog's making some noise again. Fucking puts her hand down. She's like, quit quit fussing go to sleep or whatever the fuck uh-huh. 30 minutes later or so she says she nods off she wakes up she hears the alarm go off or the microwave go off like it's been beeping so she gets up and she goes and she checks the fucking uh the microwave and the dog's in the fucking microwave and there's a post-it note somewhere near the microwave that says people can lick too oh shit <laughs> son <laughs> son bro how fucking weird is that <coughs> damn so there was a dude making dog noises on the ground next to her licking her hand that's fucked I know that's a good one I know that's a good one <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the story I feel like I'm not creative enough to make that up I think that's what I read yeah oh my imagine God. that being like displayed in video form yeah people can lick too and then just have it go back over it with the hand down there and the guy just... Not even. That's the whole point. It cuts and you're just like your head, the mental image of yeah. it is like, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> that's a banger, bro. But nah, man. So is there anything you would like to plug or add? Uh, you know, I got to plug in the Twitch. Uh, it's your boy, ChapatoSun01 on Twitch. Uh, my Facebook has actually gotten hacked. So they, oh shit yeah yeah bro that fucked me up so bad. So they got my uh, they got my gaming Facebook right now, so I can't plug that in unfortunately. But the Twitch Chipotle Sun Zero One, we still on there. Anybody that's playing Madden or Call of Duty or Apex, you know, add your boy up. I love to run with y'all. But yeah, my Facebook thing that kind of just made me sad thinking about it. Motherfuckers, <laughs> dude. He got me good, bro. He so, got good. What was the the pitch? Wasn't it like, hey, I know a guy who made who got a loan from the government. <laughs> no, was that the one, or they hit you with something else? They hit me with uh, the, so it was like a financial grant. Yes, but uh, but it was my friend had already got hacked, and he didn't tell nobody. He didn't make another page or nothing. So he got hacked, and he didn't even message me. I saw it on his story. And I was like, damn, dude. I was like, dude, you got paid 10 G's off of financial grants? I was like, you don't have to pay that back, right? And he was like, nah, bro. He was like, that's a grant. He was like, it's it's, uh, it's free. You know, it's free money pretty much that they're helping for COVID. I was like, word? I'm like, how do I get into that? I was financially in some, my girl just stopped working because she was pregnant. She was eight, eight and a half months pregnant, so I had her stop working. So I'm like, yo, how does that work, you know? He was like, I'm going to send you the the thing the link that you got to fill out i'm like all right cool so he sent it to me and i'm thinking the whole time it's my boy you know so i'm like cool you know yeah so what happens when you click the link so i clicked the link and it was just like a questionnaire right that was just like anything that you would actually like the government would actually send right so it was like your name (sighs) no social security or nothing so i didn't put that in uh but it was like your name uh email address you know your occupation how much do you make whoop de wah and uh, so I just filled it all out. And uh, one thing it did ask for, which I'm, I'm kind of dumb for, was uh, like a proof of ID. So it sent a picture of your ID. So at first I was like, that's kind of weird. But at the same time, I was like, it makes sense. It's man. the government, bro. Yeah. And, you know, it makes sense. So I was like, so I, I did that, right? And I sent it to him. And he was like, hey, perfect. They sent me an email. It was a legit looking email. I was like, you've been qualified for $13,500. You know, uh talk to your representative or talk to the agent who led you to the site and uh, go from there. So I was like, yo, man, they had sent me to this other guy now named Agent Calvin Brown. And uh, I was like, yo, I got approved for 13500 And he was like, well, you got to send me a screenshot of the, of the email. So I sent him a screenshot of the email. And he was like, all right. He was like, uh, 
you know, congratulations. That's awesome. I can't believe we get to help you out. Uh, just go to your nearest Bitcoin ATM and send us $400 for the for the funding or for, like, the delivery. You were out right there, right? Yeah. Yeah, right when you said that, I was like, uh, I don't think so, but I'm not doing that. So I told my – I went back to my friend. I go, man, I said, that shit's a scam, dog. I was like, they want me to send $400. And he was like, yeah, it's legit. It's legit. Look, I got the money. You could do it. I tried calling him. He didn't pick up. He was like, I'm at work. I was like, all right. So I kind of just like played with the dude for like a couple days, right? Because I already knew it was a scam. I didn't know my friend had gotten scammed. I was still like 50-50. So I was like shooting out questions and shit. And then uh, he was like, yeah, have you sent the 400? Have you sent the 400? Can you send the 400? Can you send the 400? I was like, man, you kind of pushing for this shit. I was like, how about... How about you guys just send me the money, and when I get it, I'll give you the 400 back. <laughs> <clears throat> and he was Mess. like, no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. So I told my friend, I was like, hey, man, if the shit's so real, I was like, let me borrow $400. I was like, I got 13500 I said, let me borrow 400 I'll pay you $800 back. Oh, I spent all my money. I invested in stocks and stuff. And I'm like, this motherfucker's never had interest in stocks or nothing, you know? So... Then I started getting red flags, and I'm like, yo, where did we work at last? And he blocked me. And I was like, all right. So I went to this other dude. I went to the agent brown who they sent me to, and I cussed him. I was like, you're a fucking scammer, dude. You fucking piece of shit. I was like, I'm going to find you. You know, threatening him and all types of shit. And the next thing I know, my I, I sent it. He read it. And then he typed something. I went to send it again, and my Facebook closed. And I was like. So I opened it back up and it was like, you've been logged out of Facebook. I was like, no. So you went to war. Was it, was there a white dude? Yeah. From the voice? I always pictured it in my head, bro. It automatically goes to like Middle Eastern motherfuckers, bro. No, it was a white guy. It was a white guy. So then, own, Your own people, bro. Man. So then he got me. So then he got me and I figured out that it was a scam. I got locked out of my Facebook and my messenger, right? Yeah. Now this motherfucker gets reckless. And he starts messaging my friends on the page, right? And, and my friends, they know how I talk. They know how I am. They're like, well, this ain't Calvin. This is too formal, whatever. He, he tried to get a hold of my cousin. You know, I'm a, I'm a crip, old crip. And he was like, what's up, bro? Hey, bro, can you, hey, bro? And he was like, hey, you're using bro too much for you to be Calvin. Like, you're not, you're not Calvin Cuss. And then, uh, then he sent one of my employee or one of my coworkers. And he was like, hey, fuck you. Fuck you and your mom. I'll fuck your mom. And my coworker calls me like, are you all right? So this dude took it real personal that you fuck with them on the phone. Yeah. So my friend calls me. <laughs> my, my friend calls me. He's like, hey, man, are you all right? And I'm like, what are you, what's up, man? I'm at work. He was like, you didn't just message me on Facebook? I'm like, no. He was like, bro, I was about to shoot you. I was like, what, what happened? And he sent me the, the screenshots, and he was like, fuck you, nigga. I fuck you and your mom. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. And he's, like, messaging this dude. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, that's not me. My Facebook's been hacked. Bro, you went to a war with the fucking uh, with some scammer. scammer, bro. Yeah. That guy went, damn. <laughs> that's awesome. And so, yeah, I got So then, a, a, whatever. So then the same picture. Uh, I made another Facebook, right? So I still was looking at my other Facebook. And he puts on the story. Just got accepted for a financial grant, $10,700 on my story, right? Black hands. Wow. <laughs> Genius, man. Holding the money with black hands. Just got just got the grant. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm white, bro. That's a, I didn't get a skin change. I didn't Michael Jackson nobody, man. That's not going to work. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, was that low-key, like, embarrassing to have this nigga just, like, putting your name on blast like that? Um, uh, yeah. I'm not saying, like, you know, like it, like, it had to be awkward. It was awkward. I was more just, I wasn't embarrassed. I was dumbfounded. Because I was like, these guys are really, really stepping up. Like, I thought I was talking to my friend the whole time. Mm-hmm. To somebody that I've I've known for years. Well, not embarrassed by him, but necessarily like if I was in your position and some dude was using like my Facebook, it's got my face and my name, and just hitting up randos and my friends list. Like, oh yeah, I was yeah. like, oh fuck, dude. yeah, dude. I definitely got a lot of messages on my on my other Facebook. I had people texting me like, hey, does your Facebook get hacked? And I'm like, yeah, 
Yeah, I did. Don't don't talk to that one. I made a new one. Like fucking uh that happened not to not exactly what happened to you clearly but fucking i got a message on my regular phone bro th- not even through messenger through my just text message it was like your apple account has been hacked if you would like to see what happened click on this link to follow the details and i remember i was thinking for a second i was like oh that sounds bad and i was like nah it's probably bullshit yeah <laughs> <clears throat> i was like don't be calvin <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm glad I could uh, help other people out. They're like, yeah, don't do not do that. That's the universal rule now, though, bro, because you get these text messages that are like, hot local females yeah. in your area. Click this link. Or like, hey, daddy, what are you doing? Click on my link to yeah. contact me so we can link up. I've clicked on some. Can we delete that? No. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's but a lesson, yeah, it's a lesson learned, bro. Yeah, lesson learned. I was just so like, like, damn, these guys are really getting good. Like these guys are. I remember, like, at first you'd be like, oh, that's a scam, right off rip. You're not getting me. But then I'm like, damn, man, I'm talking to my friend, and my friend set me up for the scam. So after all that happened, right, I'm in the hospital. My son's being born. It's probably like two weeks after my Facebook got hacked. I have a text. They because they text me, right? Because they have my number and shit. They text me. So I texted them back, and I go, yo. He was like, he was like, Calvin, I was like, how many people did you get on my Facebook, man? I feel like I'm compensated to some of that, man. I feel like you owe me some money because you ripped off some of my friends. (laughs) (laughs) And he didn't, he didn't say nothing. And, uh, I found a wallet. I found a wallet and I I was about to text him back like, Hey man, I I got another credit card for you. Just give me my stuff back. You know? (laughs) I got somebody else you can fuck with. Just give me my shit back. <laughs> Send him a little picture of a white flag. Like, all right, bro, you win. Chill. I give up. I give up. Please. Chill. Can I have my shit back? Like, uh. <laughs> But yeah, me losing my Facebook gaming account was probably like the worst thing that happened. Because I had like $50 that I made from stars. I had already got like eligibility to be a Facebook gaming. I had gotten like... 170 followers, which is, you know, you need like 100 followers to qualify as shit. And I was like, damn, man, I did all this work. I did all that promoting and all that shit for like a month to get it. And now, gone. But no, uh, with that being said, man, check out Calvin's Twitch. Twitch, Tapatosun01. We're on there almost every day. And how do you spell that? That's a lowercase C-H-I capitalize the p-o-t because i'm a pothead lowercase l-e-s-o-n zero one so it's really chipotle sun yeah chipotle no it'd be it'd be chipotle chipotle sun zero one chipotle chipotle yeah, i worked at chipotle when i made it so it was my favorite job my boy chipotle son <laughs> <laughs> but guys stay up to date on the tiktok follow the instagram youtube clearly spotify apple there's going to be a rush of content soon. We're going to take a little break. That's what this was for the most part. Just a little intermission, just some extra content for you guys. Thank you for watching. This has been the Death Taco Podcast.